May 1989. Before I get into that though, here's another new background. Basically, I'm normally sitting with my back that way, and you're seeing my quilt. Last time I recorded, I moved so I, my back was that way, and you saw some crap behind me, books and things. And now I'm, I'm facing my quilt. And you can see this. There's the TV over there. Right up there, that's a signed print from Mike Zek, the cover of Secret Wars that he did. Back there, a bunch of comic books, uh, just great covers. So I've got them hanging on the wall. Uh, you can see a bookshelf over there. And once again, you can see I just got figures covering. There we go, figures covering the bookshelf. And uh, there's some prints. On the side of the bookshelf, um, some more stuff, books over there, a dresser. I'm going to move a little bit, and you can see my stack of comics, but you can see my Cthulhu shelf, what was originally my Cthulhu shelf. Now there's a bunch of stuff on it, but it used to have just, just my Cthulhu figures and things. Um, pull my leg up there to make myself a little more comfortable anyway that's another wall in this room and normally I'm sitting over there and I get to just look at those wonderful wonderful comic book covers all right so let's get into May of 1989 uh, it's the penultimate month that I spent in California uh, we're coming up on on me leaving my three years, approximately three years in California in the Air Force. So what did I read during that month? Well, let me tell you. The first book was Killer's Payoff by Ed McBain. This was an 87th Precinct book. Uh, there's a, a blackmailer is gunned down in the streets, and our intrepid detectives of the 87th Precinct have to figure out uh, who killed him. Is it one of the many people he was blackmailing or is it was it somebody else unrelated to the blackmailing who knows you got to read the book to find out it's an 87th precinct they're great pro police police procedurals uh fantastic books next we have the source of magic by Piers anthony uh this is at the very least the third time i had read this book uh, this is the first Possibly only book, after reading it the first time, as soon as I got to the last page, I immediately went to the first page and read it again. It was the first Pierce Anthony book I ever read. It's the second book in the Xanth series. Uh, I just saw the cover at the library, thought it looked cool, picked it up, read it, loved it. Uh, so for those who don't know, Xanth is this magical country that is shaped like Florida, and every single citizen has a very specific mag magic talent. Essentially, you're born with this talent that lets you do one magical thing. Uh, in the first book, there's a character, Bink, who appeared not to have magic. And if you, if you don't have magic, you're kicked out of Xanth. But things work out for Bink because he's the main character in The Source of Magic. The king hires him basically, or sends him on a quest to find the source of magic for Xanth. And, uh, you know, adventure ensues. I recall really loving this book. Book number three, Crimson Joy by uh, Robert B. Parker. This is apparently the 15th book in the Spencer series. And uh, there's a serial killer, so our private detective... Spencer is after this serial killer. His uh, psychiatrist or psychologist, can't remember which one she is, his psychi psychiatrist, psychologist girlfriend may have some insight. The killer may even be one of her patients. We don't know. Uh, Hawk is in it, as always. Uh, and I believe this is the first time, I'm 99.9% .9 certain, this is the first time that we leave the first-person perspective. All of the Spencer books are told by Spencer. It's all in first person. This is mostly in first person, but there are chapters that are third person focusing on the serial killer. Pretty sure they're third person. But we actually leave that 
you know, normally everything we're told in a Spencer book is from Spencer's POV. He's telling us the story. If there's something he doesn't know, we don't know it either. But in this case, we do know things because we're there are chapters that follow the serial killer. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's a Spencer book, so it's good. Not one of my favorites. All right. Book number four, The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath by H.P. Lovecraft. And I believe, I had to look this up, uh, I could not find, like on Amazon, I couldn't find a version that's the same cover. But the title's the same, so I assume the contents are the same, in which case, this is a novella, stars Randolph Carter, and he's trying to find a land from his dreams. Uh, I I want to say that all of the Randolph Carter, Carter stories take place, at least in part, in the dream worlds, but I, I not enough of a uh, Lovecraft scholar to say if that, to, to know for sure if that's the case. I just I feel like Randolph Carter focuses on the dream worlds. Um, so again, this is I, I can't say if this is his introductory story, but he's dreaming about a place and so he's trying to find that place in the dream worlds. Next up, The Tomb and Other Tales by H.P. Lovecraft. I'm not going to tell you all of the stories that are that, that are in this. Uh, it's a bunch of short stories. And, but I will mention that this does have the story The Horror of Red Hook, which is the inspiration for The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval. Um, I did not know that until one of my faithful viewers and commenters, Michael Booker, pointed it out. Um, so I have read The Horror at Red Hook, even though I didn't realize that it was uh, the basis, the inspiration for The Battle of Black Tom. Uh, but I just looked it up, and yeah, there are characters from the Lovecraft story that are in the Victor Laval story. Uh, so it's basically kind of the same story told from a different perspective kind of thing ish anyway it's more hp lovecraft and then finally not a lot of books read in may of uh 1989 because i knew i was leaving california i had a lot of stuff to do uh so the last book is playmates by robert b parker the 16th book in the spencer series and in this one uh, Spencer is investigating a college basketball player who may or may not be cheating, shaving points, things like that. Uh, I do like this one, and I'm not a huge sports fan. I know just enough about sports to be dangerous. Um, uh, I think, though, that this is the first time that I understood point spread. Is that the right term? See, I don't, I don't know. Because they talk about the fact that uh, this this basketball player or any basketball player that's, that's cheating in this way, shaving points, it's not about losing the game. It's about winning by just enough to not beat the point spread, I think would be the right way to do it. Um, you know, it's... It's Ohio State by 10. And so this player would miss just enough shots that Ohio State still wins, but it's only by 8. So those betting on the point spread are going to lose or win, depending on which way they bet, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I didn't know anything about that kind of thing until I read this book. You know, I thought there was winning and losing. Didn't know anything about point spreads. Uh, but good book. So, yeah, that's it. Um, what is that? Six books I read in May of 1989. All pretty good. We got horror, we got mystery, we got fantasy. That's a decent mix. So, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about the books. Uh, and I've said everything I wanted to say about the background. And there's one more, because this room has four walls. So next week when I record, somehow there's a window there 
I don't think I want that to be the background, so I, I'll have to... I don't know what I'm going to do. It doesn't matter. You'll find out next time. Uh, all right, so if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Uh, just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here on my channel. If you have any questions about uh, the comic books that are on the wall or any of the other crap, I don't know how well you can see it. Um, so, yeah, any questions about that? Hey, feel free. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to follow me on other social media, my Instagram, I'm doing this backwards, apparently. My Instagram is ericsmith5757. That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K, S-M-I-T-H, 5757. I post pictures of books, comics, board games, and fuzzy animals. Uh, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. Uh, right, that's all I've got. So until next time, read more books.